Well, Low Faith family, and thank you again for joining us for the Daily Connection. Uh, we hope these videos are proving beneficial to you because we go about this every week trying to make sure we're giving you something, just a little something to think about, something to contemplate perhaps as you're getting into the Word daily, and, and that's our goal. It's to kind of help, you know, compel each of us to get into the Word and, and to know that we as a faith family, we're united together in the Word every day because the Word of God never returns empty. It always accomplishes its purpose. And of course, Paul tells in Romans chapter 12, you know, we need to renew our mind. We, we're going to be trans, if we're going to be transformed, then it's going to have to come through the renewal of our mind as well. How do we do that? Through the Word of God. And so in terms of renewal, it comes through clarification. That's exactly what John's doing here. In this letter that he's written, he's trying to clarify in terms of the very essence of who Jesus is, that yes, he is God, but he's also fully man. And he again, it's like in verse 1, he started an idea, and some translations capture this by you know, inserting almost like a, a, a statement, you know, a, a, an indicator in the, 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 the text saying, hey, pause that thought, pick up this thought, and in verses 2 and 3, or mainly in verse 2, he kind of goes along on another idea. Now here in verse 3, it's like he's picking up that idea to finish it again. And so some of what he says is almost repetitive. For instance, he says in verse 3, What we have seen and heard, we, have also, we also declare to you, so that you may also have fellowship with us. Uh, it's interesting because it's like he, he flipped his order around. Because back in verse 1, he said, What we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes. Now he says, What we have heard. We also, excuse me, now he says what we have seen and what we have heard. So it's just like he's trying to pick his thought back up again. And he says, hey, these are the things we have declared to you. Again, that word seen, uh, like I explained to you um, what, Tuesday, uh, is the idea of, of an investigation, a careful investigation to, uh, to understand the, the, the truth of something. So John, again, coming back saying, hey, just I want to remind you what we have investigated carefully, what we have heard. He says, this we declare to you. Why? And there's a, you know, in Greek we call it a hena clause because it's, the, it's that word. It's a so that statement. So that you may have fellowship with us. Now, we know the word fellowship. We even know the Greek word, koinonia. Uh, but there's so many different ways that's understood now. And there's different applications that are made. And, and frankly, there's, there's instances where context has to drive the understanding. And that's what's going on here. Uh, when he says fellowship with us, he, he's talking in one sense of a, a mutual partnership. Uh, that was often how the word would be used in terms, you know, a partnership, an agreement. Uh, but more than that, though, I think what John's getting at here is a mutual participation in. Uh, and specifically because he goes on in verse 3 to mention our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. He's talking about the mutual participation in the very life of Christ. You know, in of course, one of the questions might be, well, what does that look like exactly? Well, look with me down in verses 5 through 7. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. There is absolutely no darkness in him. If we say we have fellowship with him, there's our word again, Koinonia, and yet we walk in darkness, we're lying and not practicing the truth. If we walk in light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. So there we see, and by the way, the word fellowship is used roughly four times in the letter, 1 John. And just about every one of them is right here. Starting in verse 3, then we see it again in verse 5, excuse me, verse 6, then we see it again in verse 7. All of it captured right there. And what does it mean to have that fellowship? What are we talking about that mutual participation? Well, he says it right here. It's walking in the light. It's living with the very life of Christ within us. It's that, pure, it's that purity, holiness. It's that righteousness that goes along with that. It's the idea of truth, no deception. And, you know, of course, the purity comes back to what he says, hey, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. And so John is saying this. The reason why we're declaring to you this message is because we want you to enjoy that mutual participation that we have with Christ. The very life of Christ living in us, the very nature of the Father by the presence of His Holy Spirit within us. And so when it comes to us sharing the message, that's one other element to what motivates us to share the message. Certainly, we don't want to see anybody die and leave this world without a relationship with Christ, which means judgment in hell. We, we should never want that for anyone. Jesus never, would never want that for anyone. 
In the same token, though, we should also be motivated by desire to have to, so that people can experience the mutual participation in the life of Christ in this life right now. So they no longer be deceived by the adversary. So that their life would be a life pursuing holiness, pursuing righteousness. And so for that reason, we are to be very uh, diligent. We're to be dedicated, committed to declaring. And that's what John said. They, hey, what we've seen, what we've heard, we declare so that. And so that's got to be our motive, folks. Well, I hope this is beneficial to you. I certainly hope it maybe clarifies a few things for you. But more importantly, I hope it motivates you. Uh, you're going to have opportunities today that maybe you didn't have yesterday. Uh, you're going to have doors open for you today that didn't open, that were closed yesterday. And there are going to be doors that closed today that were open yesterday. That's the nature of life. But one thing about it, we always must be faithful and we always must be diligent and discerning of when the Holy Spirit is guiding us, who He's guiding us to. And we must be diligent in speaking up and speaking out, sharing, as John says, you're declaring this fellowship that that we have with the Father and that they can have with the Father through a relationship with Christ. Love you folks. Hope your week is going well and strong. Look forward to seeing you in worship on Sunday. But until that time, live sin.